JB, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. How are you doing? I am well. And yourself? I'm doing well. Yeah, what are you up to today, man? I am uh, working on a house, putting in a foundation. You know, you got to have a good, solid foundation. And you need to, I mean, I don't know anything about home building, but I think you should always start with the foundation. <laughs> that, that would always be good. Everybody <laughs> needs a solid foundation. I think so, yes. And education is the key to a good foundation, Jason. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, hey, uh, let's talk about the city of Martinsburg, and uh, I want to circle back to Lambert Park, Lambert Pool, as uh, you are involved in this from a couple of different angles, uh, first and foremost as a city councilman and as a resident of Martinsburg as well. Uh, Jason, can you tell us the latest? Any new updates on this? Um, no real new updates. We're getting closer to that uh, the due date of when we're going to get the, uh, the plans back for the different um, aspects and of uh, indoor, outdoor, pool, splash park, the whole everything. Um, we, we pretty much threw everything in the kitchen sink so that we could come up with a good plan um, for that facility. Um, and, and I went and asked for an update actually this morning. Um, and uh, we're still on that by the end of October. We will be uh, we'll be having that information and obviously getting that out to the public, having a meeting um, probably right there at the beginning, mid mid November. My guess would be so that we could start having those discussions of what we want and what we see in the future for uh, Lambert and the entire 2000 Rec Center. Jason, who are the city appointees to the Parks and Rec Board? Do you know off the top of your head? <laughs> It's funny because a lot of them, you got Buzz Poland is one of them, um, Engel, Roger Engel, mm -hmm. and making me look bad today, Rob. It's okay, buddy. Um, you got two. I, I, the third one I'm on there, of course, the, you know, you got, and then you got the counties with uh, Chris Palmer, um, the school boards, Jennifer Smith. Um, of course, we have our liaison, which is Ken Collinson. Um, from the council. Okay. Hey, as Meatloaf said, two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> it's not bad at all. Don't say hey, Meatloaf. I'd I'd be in, the, in baseball, I'd be in the Hall of Fame. Right? There, there you go. go. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, so uh, there are some who think the city should break off and have their own Parks and Rec board. I don't know how vocal that movement is now. I know uh, a couple of years ago it had a little bit of, of, uh, of traction there with some people. Are you a believer in that, or do you like the current status quo? That is a tough question. Um, I think. So tough that he hung up on me. <laughs> Jason, Jason, come in. Jason, are you there? Yeah, Jason's going to have to call us back on that one because uh, he was just starting to get the. The answer going it's on. It's a good time. It's yeah. a good time to get off. I, I, I hope we get him back. I want to ask the question like when he talked about different plans there, and, there and getting those different plans, yeah. we'll, we'll get to it here in a minute. I think he whatever just got uh, got dumped there, but I see. I ran into him at the uh, Martinsburg game week before last yeah. at the slaughter. Jason. Yes, sorry. So, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I apologize. Um, so you were asking me about if the, the separation of Parks and Rec yes. um, mm -hmm. from city to county. And I was telling you, that's a tough question. Um, I'm not opposed or pushing for it at this moment. I think that as the growth of the county and the city continue, that that question will have to be revisited more and more often um, just to make sure that the city residents are getting value um, from their parks and rec service. But that's a tough question mm -hmm. without having a lot of research and a lot of information. By the way, Teresa McCabe, also on that board, Jim Klein just texted me to say from the hospital, she's the representative there. Is, is it something that the city would have the budget for? <laughs> it would have to be something that it, it would have to self-sustain to, to some degree. I, to add it to like our general fund above where we already are are giving would be a tough ask 
Um, and the only reason that I could see for a city council to make that radical of a change would be if we if we see that the county or the Parks and Recs moving pulling funds, um, which they are not, um, out of the city and into the county. Um, it, it, the, like once again, it's a tough question without having a lot of a lot more information. You, you got to know where everything, where all the dollars are, and making sure that it that it's financially capable of doing it. How are we going to generate the revenue? You know, it's one thing to pull pull it away and have two different services, but then you're you're also going to be competing with the county's rec system. So you're going to be competing with their basketball programs, their soccer programs. So I don't know. It, it, there would be a lot of information to make me comfortable for me to even entertain the idea of a true split. Parks and Rec does not currently have an executive director unless they hired somebody, and I, I missed the update on that. Do you have any idea at this time uh, who's running things, where you get information when you have questions from Parks and Rec? I would, uh, of course, call into the into the uh, the office, and they've been great with getting information. Um, of course, President Jennifer Smith um, is always good with giving more information of of anything that's going on. Um, I've seen a real big uptick with Parks and Rec's communication um, through social media, and I think that. That's going to continue. I know talking um, with some of the board members that they are making a very strong push to make that more well um, the information to get back out there. Mm-hmm. And I and I and I said it. I was having a uh, we were having a meeting um, a few weeks ago, and I made a comment. Also, all the citizens, you know, we see something first. Get on the Parks and Rec's page, their Facebook page, um, and and like the page, get the information, share it, get the information out. The more people that do that, I know it's not, you know, I had someone who said, that's not my job. Well, if you care about the kids and you care about all that, the more that gets shared around, it's just how social media works. Um, and And that's free. That doesn't cost any more tax dollars to you know to boost it and i and i think that that is would be a big benefit for parks right general this is jonathan in general i think that's one of the problems with our society people don't pay enough attention it is it is the voters job to uh the 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 people in our community the the, the taxpayers it is our job to monitor what's going on and pay attention to things so that we can give our opinion because everyone's opinion matters and so that we can make sure that things are being done right and if they're not done right that or or if they're done really well so everybody knows it absolutely yeah absolutely and i and i think that there's been you know obviously there's going to be there's a change at the head of parks and rec or will be a change in the head um i know they've advertised the position and are taking applicants um and that's their process, and um, they'll go through that process and, and hopefully get a good, great candidate. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, I, I, I always applaud people paying attention and, and, uh, because it, may, it, it actually makes my job better and easier for me because if, if people were paying attention, then I don't have that. Well, why didn't you do it this way? Well, if you t- if you give me your opinion before it, it comes up, maybe it's something that I didn't see or didn't pay attention. But yeah, I'm always I think uh, that's always a positive. By the way, Jen Smith uh, next Tuesday, the tenth, will be on the program with Eddie Gokenauer, who's the liaison to the Parks and Rec Board from the County Commission. Uh, she'll be on the program at nine o'clock. And this is huge. This breaks precedent mm-hmm. because the Parks and Rec Board for the longest time has had a policy of not doing public interviews. They're not elected officials and they didn't feel it was their responsibility or job to do interviews. That was the reason why they hired an executive director who would always be available for 
interviews and such or get information out. But uh, without a director right now, Jen Smith, with the help of uh, Eddie Gukenauer, will be on the program next Tuesday at 9 uh, o'clock there, just a note. Matt Miller. Jason, how much does the city put into parks and recreation right now? Well, they get their share of the hotel mode spell, which they get the full um, 3% um, that, you know, the, that we divvy to them. And um, and then there and then when there's extras and I don't have that number exactly mm -hmm. to the point. Um, Lambert Pool last year was over 150 thousand additional. Um, we're going to be talking about pickleball courts um, off of Baltimore um, Street. You know that'll be an additional to know exactly that. I'll put it this way. In my 12 years on the city council, we have never denied park and, park and rec request. Um, so we've never been an entrance to them. Do you feel that you're getting your money's worth in, you know, what you are putting in and, and what you are receiving in the city? <laughs> um, you always want more. Mm -hmm. I think, but I think, I, I do think that they're, I think that they do do a good job with with the money that they receive. I, I do believe that they they do a nice job. Um, I have voiced this with the with board members, the communication part, um, and I think well, we even with like Jennifer Smith coming on the show um, next week. Uh, that's a huge step forward. Um, you know, I, I think once again, more mouth speaking and talking about it. And getting the message out is really good because, honestly, over the last about six months, the only people that have been talking about Parks and Recs for the most part has been negative. And I'm not saying there's not room for improvement, but they've also done a lot of good. And um, I do think that we have a good park system, and, uh, and I think that uh, – just, just being able to communicate that message would be is the biggest um, issue that I've had over the last six months, uh, and I, and I think that that's going to get solved fairly quickly. I do want to circle back to where you began with the the Lambert Park pool project and and those different plans that will be coming in by the end of October. Uh, there was some pushback about the idea of the splash park, but to your knowledge and all that's been going on at the pool. Is it realistic to put another pool in that spot with all of the issues that have been faced right now? Yes, um, I think it, I think it's a very realistic um, option. I I think that the water, the hydraulic pressure issues, could be mediated. Obviously, we have an engineer company that's going to tell us that um and um but yeah i think i think a, a, a new pool or i mean in every aspect is is being looked at even to the point of a full rehab of the structure itself you know how many years we're going to get some of those ideas and cost analysis to know where we're at and be able to get it back up in operation as quickly as we can um and so i think all that is is on the table and uh i know that we have received a lot of pushback about you know a splash park well what about the teens what about this um i think that all of those options we're going to know where the cost is and we're going to know and we're going to have to – the city is definitely going to have to have some partners. Um, it will not be something that the city solely can handle um, through our general fund. It, you know, it, it will have to be hopefully, you know, a joint effort with the county, um, maybe the school board. Um, and, and, if, and, and ultimately it also could be down to a bond to be able to cover because we don't want to put a project in – Something that I'm pretty proud with the city is in my tenure and even before me is we don't we don't half projects we we have we when we get into a project we do them 
and we complete them and we do them to the 100 percent um so that they'll last and and uh so that we're not just maintenancing them constantly so i believe that that will make a big difference well i i can tell you out of a, as a resident of the city of martinsburg for 27 years now I am. Uh, I, I think you guys. I think that the mayor and the council do a great job fiscally in this town. I think. Um, I think we all should be very proud of our elected officials, and I want to say thank you for that, Jason. Thank you for those nice comments. Um, I think. I mean, th- there's so much going on in the city with the the parks. I mean, we've got the dog park. We've got the one pool. We're going to have hopefully the other pool open <laughs> if the engineers come back and say it's feasible. I mean, it's a um, it, it's a growing thing, and, and hopefully they find the right director. Are there any other things within the city limits that you see parks and rec wise, or you know anything for for kids that we need to maybe have in the uh, in the city of Martinsburg? Yeah, there's multiples. <laughs> You, the show's not long enough for me to go with all the stuff I'd love to see. If, if we're not talking about, I have to figure out where to pay for it all. But let, let me give you a few that I think are reasonable. One that we're already working on would be Thomas Lake. Um, opening that up as a walking path and then as phase one and then, you know, get into phase two and being able to get inside um, and having maybe some – being people being able to use the water itself I think would be is a huge change of the park system I mean it would be the only one um, like it that Berkeley you know Berkeley County Park and Rec have um, for, for our listeners can you tell us where Thomas Lake is yes it's on the corner of Kentucky Avenue and Martin Street okay and it sets at Tennessee Avenue, and then there's a bunch of other streets that kind of set in there around that area. Um, it, it's, uh, it was an old quarry hole that is a lake that, you know, has fresh water. Um, but it, it, it'll be a huge, huge plus, um, especially once we get it cleaned up, walking past. Um, it, I think people, it'll be a draw, similar It'll be it'll be a draw similar to um, Poor House Farm. I, I think it'll it'll be a very well used park, and uh, especially if we, we once we get into the second and third phases of being able to get into the water. Um, but to go on to that, I, I think the other options that we need for our park system is we need some fields, um, multi used fields. Um, turfed so that they they can hold up to um flag football which is a growing sport um and i know that everybody in there knows that i'm a a uh, huge martinsburg bulldog fan and go to all the games um but the flag football leagues are growing um the tackle football leagues and the youth are shrinking and so I think that that's an opportunity for all the these. City. It's all these parents who care about concussions for their kids. It's crazy. <laughs> well, and girls' flag football is growing very fast. Oh yeah, it is. There's even high school teams now. Yes. Go on. I'm sorry yeah, to me to I, interrupt you. No, and I think that that is the truth. I think that is the, and I, and, and I'm not going to get it. I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to get into the to the concussions or anything like that. But it might make some sense to get them the techniques. Of flag football, and so I think that that's a, that's going to be growing. Lacrosse is growing, um, soccer is growing, and so to be able to have a multi-use um, field that is turfed, I think would be a huge um, thing for the park system to have. Is there a place Obviously, you could envision that, or the Bodwell multiple, backyard? Yeah, multiple locations. Lambert Pool. Lambert 2000 Rec Center facility, I think, could be one. Um, There's other ground around there that has been talked about that has been for sale, possibly for sale. I I think that that would make some sense. I think that um, over on Baltimore Street would make some sense. I, I think there's some multiple locations that we could add on to already existing facilities so that it's all kind of tied together. And then, of course, the ultimate thing that is a huge money 
um, would be an indoor multi-used facility, fields facility. Um, you know, I know Hagerstown announced that they're going to be putting one in. Um, I think over by, I think it's over by the Suns old stadium is where that, where that one's going. Um, you know, Frederick has one. It's kind of the growth because obviously in our climate, we only have so many days that it's okay to be outside. And, um, the growth of indoor track is, is another thing and, and just being able to open that up. And uh, this goes without even mentioning an indoor pool, right? <laughs> Think about an what, what an indoor pool would do just for all the kids on swim team and having swim lessons year-round. Well, and the adults with, uh, with issues with their joints as they're mm-hmm. getting older. I mean, swimming is, uh, swimming is a great cardiovascular activity that doesn't put as much pressure on the body. Jason, we're just about out of time. Before we do run out of time, I wanted to ask you the final couple of weeks of Mark Baker. Uh, Mark Baker. <laughs> Mark, Baldwin's, yeah, Mark Baldwin's tenure as the city manager. It's, uh, there, there's definitely a little bit of sadness there. He's been, uh, for all intents and purposes, for me, he's been the, well, he is pretty much the only city manager that I remember um, for the city. And, and uh, even if we, me and him butted heads, the respect that I have for him is um, endless. And uh, I think that uh, he uh, has done huge things for our city financially and has kept us in a, in a situation to be a leading city in West Virginia. Um, of course, Andy Blake, our new city manager will is, I think will do extremely well. And, but, uh, for Mark, I hope he, that he can enjoy his retirement and, uh, spend time with his grandkid and, and his family. And, um, I, I, I could see him being active in, in, uh, in this, still in the city of Martinsburg and in Berkeley County after his time with the city manager. Jason, thanks so much. Any final thoughts? Anything you wanted to make sure you got across that we didn't get to? The only thing I will go through the big list. You can you can get onto our website and get the full list. Um, but we're we're paving, um, and so uh, this uh, this week we got multiple streets in, in my ward. We have Union and Pennsylvania and some Boyd Avenues getting paved. Um, almost $1.4 million worth of paving um, this this come around, which is one of the largest that I've seen since I've been on council. Very good, sir. Thanks so much for your time this morning, Jason. Much appreciated. No problem. Anytime. Thanks for having me. City Councilman Jason Baker, always cooperative. Uh, 